Right, guys. A University of Benin senior lecturer allegedly raped final year student in his office. Nigeria to borrow yet another 16.45 trillion naira to finance 2022 budgets. And the very last one for today is 500 Nigerians lose jobs as United Arab Emirates declines renewal of work visas. Hello guys and welcome to Chrisog Media Network. If this is your first time to this channel, please go ahead and click the subscribe button as well as open the notification bell icon on the side. The essence is that you will be notified once we drop a new clip. Quite a few number of people are, are, are unable to actually lay their hands on the daily newspapers. So we try as much as possible on this channel to work to uh, intensify more on our workforce to be able to bring the news to your doorstep and to your hearings on a daily basis. Now let's kick on with the university uh, lecturer uh, of University of Benin who allegedly raped a final year student in right in his office. You know, we don't know exactly what to say to that. But then um, it has been reported that the lecturer is a senior lecturer of um, Department of English and Literature, Faculty of Arts, that's the University of Benin, was actually accused of raping that female student. Right, this is no longer new to us because this kind of a thing happens on the university campus on a regular basis. So it's not longer a new a news to us, right? But it is something that the, the, the uh, educational body system of Nigeria has to look into critically. They were talking about the ones we heard. What about the ones we don't know about? You know, this kind of a thing is on a regular basis. We're talking about a 400-level student. A 400-level student of that department is an adult that the lecturer himself can talk to one-on-one. -on -one. You know, I know it might be against the ethic of that profession and of the university at large, but outside of the university, you can talk to her one-on-one. -on -one. If she agrees, fine. If she doesn't agree, it's up to you. But why go ahead to rape? Are in the office to the extent of you locked her up for hours in the room. You lock the student for hours in the room so that she doesn't escape. There have been several comments on the social media with regards to this that some people said uh, it, the lecturer did not rape her, um, the student threw herself at him, and all, all sorts of things like that. But it's just one side of the story. And uh, there's been a viral video as well of the lecturer pleading for forgiveness of what he has actually done. Now, when the student was actually locked up in that particular room, she was able to uh, get in touch with one of her friends unnamed for security reasons. So it was that friend of ours that actually alleged the security officials of that university. And the security officials of that university uh, succeeded in arresting this lecturer and uh, he was taken to the university board for uh, questioning. Now, listen very carefully to this. The source said the news of the indicting incident was first reported on a WhatsApp class group. A video was posted which showed the lecturer pleading for forgiveness and regretting his actions. So the lecturer actually regretted the actions, but I think it is too late to cry when the head is off. So <laughs> that's really serious, guys. Raping, you know, where you can actually talk to a lady with your mouth, with the kind of position you are holding. Anyway, that's by the way, he will face the wrath of the law, and I hope that the, the justice will be served accordingly. This is another one. This is very crazy. Nigeria to borrow yet another 16.45 trillion naira to finance 2022 budgets. People were like, wow. Of recent, we borrowed four, four point something billion, and now we are coming again to borrow another 16.45. Four five trillion naira to finance that 2022 budget. Now, concerns has been raised, alarm has been raised. People have raised eyebrows with regard to this particular step the federal government is about to take. They actually said, "Don't harm our future." Experts warn federal government plans more loans. Quite unfortunate that we keep borrowing and borrowing and borrowing and borrowing. But the unfortunate thing is that we don't even know where the loan is going to, where the money is going to. So the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria and economic expert on Wednesday expressed concerns about the high deficit in the 2022 budget. Because the budget itself 
60 to 70 percent of it goes into embezzlement. All right, goes into embezzlement, and the most most of the money is paid to these honorables, commissioners, house of rep members, huge amount of money, which is not even worth it in the first place. And now we say our budget is in deficit. It's quite sad. It's quite sad. So they have actually said, that's the man, Manufacturers Association of Nigeria has actually said, and I've warned both the executive and the National Assembly against endangering the future of the economy. The future of the economy is already in danger because of this money that has been borrowed. Nigeria is going to continue to be subjected to these foreign countries they are borrowing money for, you know, which is going to be a very huge uh, subjection and it's going to be a huge uh, danger to the future of the economy. Please note this. The Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Zain Ahmed, disclosed this to the State House of Correspondence after Federal Executive Council at its meeting on Wednesday approved $16.39 trillion for 2022 appropriation bill. And she went further to say the meeting was presided over by the President, Major General Muhammad Dubuari. If, she pre if, if the President presides over the meeting, say what, what, what do we expect? That particular request has to be granted. That particular request has to be given a huge, a very serious, a positive consideration. Otherwise, whoever is sitting as a chairman of that particular board will have to be expelled because the president Nigeria of Nigeria is actually uh, the one who shared the meeting. Now listen to what very devastating statement that the minister made, which I am still finding it very difficult to understand here. The minister stated, if we... If we just depend on the revenues that we get, even though our revenues have increased, the operational expenditure of the government, including salaries and other overheads, is barely covered or swallowed up by the revenue. So we need to borrow to be able to build this project that we ensure we are able to develop on a sustainable basis. So what they are saying now is that the internally generated revenue, which is the IGP, only covers salaries. All right, the salaries that are not regularly paid, the pensions areas that are not regularly paid. So, where does the IGP, the internally generated revenue, where do, does it go? Does it mean we have to continue to borrow? What about small, small countries? What about other African countries who don't even borrow at all? Who don't even have anything? They don't have the oil, they don't have crude, they don't have cola, they don't have gold, they don't have diamond, they don't have anything in their country, but yet they are not borrowing. So, we need to look critically into the problems of Nigeria and otherwise. The future is going to be really sad. It's going to be really terrible. Now, this one. A lot of people, over 500 Nigerians in the United Arab Emirates have actually uh, lost their job and have been stranded for four months in the, United, in the United Arab Emirates. What's the reason? Because the United Arab Emirates have actually stopped granting or renew their employment visas Right. This has raised a very serious concerns amongst people over there and amongst the citizens of uh, Nigeria. You know that because they don't know the reason why the the work visa have, have not been uh, uh, renewed on a regular basis. It has been gathered that some of the Nigerians over there whose visas has been has not been renewed has returned to Nigeria. Why some of them are still waiting over there to see if the uh, Abu Dhabi will revert its direction, its uh, decision on the visa. It's quite sad. It's quite sad. If our country is good, why would we want to travel to different countries to see greener pastures? But because our country is not even a home, you know, it's not even home enough. So people have to travel far and wide to get greener pasture. Quite unfortunate. Very, very unfortunate. Now listen to what the ambassador to Nigeria, of UAE ambassador to Nigeria said. Dr. Fahad Halhali has said, there was no official communication on the issuance of work permits for Nigerians living and working in this country. So yeah, there hasn't been any kind of a roundtable talk with regard to this particular statement, with regard to this particular action. So they have the right, they reserve the right to either grant, renew visas for Nigerians who reside or work in the United Arab Emirates. So it's quite sad that that's exactly what they have faced. Over, nine, over 500 Nigerian have been stranded. A lot of them has lost their job and they are stranded. They don't know exactly what to do. They cannot come back home. It's very bad. Listen to this very, very, very uh, uh, interesting statement. I have a Nigerian graduate who was earning 40,000 Naira back home and he came to the UAE 
and was being paid almost 500,000 every month. Now, his visa would expire by November. He couldn't renew. He kept calling me every time for an update. Right. A Dubai-based activist, Oluwato Sinfadoju, observed that the UAE was using the policy as a punishment against Nigeria, stressing that the federal government was not doing enough to resolve the issue. Of course, they can't be bothered. They are bothered about different kinds of things, you know. Uh, they won't bother about that, you know. They, they, they have actually uh, forgotten what they're supposed to do. They leave what they're supposed to do and be doing other things which are not necessary. Now, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, which is uh, the minister, uh, spoke with Mrs. Esther Sosunwa said, we have no information yet, but we are going to get into, in touch with our two offices in the United Arab Emirates, Abu Dhabi and Dubai, to verify the story. If true, adequate diplomatic steps will be taken to overcome the challenges. So that is the statement being made by the uh, the spokesperson of that particular minis ministry. That's the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Uh, yes, so that is that, guys. Uh, it's very, very bad. Uh, we hope that our country, Nigeria, will continue to develop and to grow in strength. Otherwise, the future, just like it's been said, will be really hard. Just like the future, the unborn generation, it's going to be really, really hard for them because of what we are seeing on a regular basis without people being cautioned. So, guys, what are your takes on these particular headlines of today? Whatever it is, do not hesitate to leave them in the comment section below. To the returning subscribers, I welcome you and I give you a thumbs up. Thank you very much for helping us to grow the channel. And to those of you who are yet to subscribe, please go ahead and click the subscribe button. It doesn't cost a thing. Just uh, subscribe and open the notification bell icon on the side. And the essence is that you'll be notified anytime we drop a new clip. We'll try as much as possible to give you authentic, updated news headlines on daily basis so that you won't miss out. And until next time when I'll be coming your way, my name is Chris and I'm from Chris Hogg Media Network. Stay tuned and stay blessed. Bye for now.